Chapter 18, Conclusion, The Perfection of Renunciation Arjuna said, O mighty armed one, I wish to understand the purpose of renunciation, Tyag, and of the renounced order of life, Sanyas, O killer of the Keshi demon, Rishikesh. The Supreme Lord said, To give up the result of all activities is called renunciation, Tyag, by the wise. And that state is called the renounced order of life, Sanyas, by great learned men. Some learned men declare that all kinds of fruit of activities should be given up. But there are yet other sages who maintain that the acts of sacrifice, charity, and penance should never be abandoned. O best of the Bharatas, hear from me now about renunciation. O tiger among men, there are three kinds of renunciation declared in the scriptures. Acts of sacrifice, charity, and penance are not to be given up, but should be performed. Indeed, sacrifice, charity, and penance purify even the great souls. All these activities should be performed without any expectation of result. They should be performed as a matter of duty, O son of Pritha. That is my final opinion. Prescribed duties should never be renounced. If, by illusion, one gives up his prescribed duties, such renunciation is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Anyone who gives up prescribed duties as troublesome or out of fear is said to be in the mode of passion. Such action never leads to the elevation of renunciation. But he who performs his prescribed duties only because it ought to be done and renounces all attachment to the fruit, his renunciation is of the nature of goodness, O Arjuna. Those who do not hate any inauspicious work, nor are attached to auspicious work situated in the mode of goodness, have no doubts about work. It is indeed impossible for an embodied being to give up all activities. Therefore it is said that he who renounces the fruits of action is one who has truly renounced. For one who is not renounced, the threefold fruits of action, desirable, undesirable, and mixed, accrue after death. But those who are in the renounced order of life have no such results to suffer or enjoy. O mighty armed Arjun, learn from me of the five factors which bring about the accomplishment of all action. These are declared in Sankhya philosophy to be the place of action, the performer, the senses, the endeavor, and ultimately the supersoul. Whatever right or wrong action a man performs by body, mind, or speech is caused by these five factors. Therefore, one who thinks himself the only doer, not considering the five factors, is certainly not very intelligent and cannot see things as they are. One who is not motivated by false ego, whose intelligence is not entangled, though he kills men in this world, is not the slayer, nor is he bound by his actions. Knowledge, the object of knowledge, and the knower are the three factors which motivate action. The senses, the work, and the doer comprise the threefold basis of action. In accordance with the three modes of material nature, there are three kinds of knowledge, action, and performers of action. Listen as I describe them. That knowledge by which undivided spiritual nature is seen in all existence, undivided in the divided, is knowledge in the mode of goodness. That knowledge by which a different type of living entity is seen to be dwelling in different bodies is knowledge in the mode of passion. And that knowledge by which one is attached to one kind of work as the all in all without knowledge of the truth and which is very meager is said to be in the mode of darkness. As for actions, that action in accordance with duty which is performed without attachment, without love or hate by one who has renounced fruit of results is called action in the mode of goodness. But action performed with great effort by one seeking to gratify his desires and which is enacted from a sense of false ego is called action in the mode of passion. And that action performed in ignorance and delusion without consideration of future bondage or consequences which inflicts injury and is impractical is said to be action in the mode of ignorance. The worker who is free from all material attachments and false ego, who is enthusiastic and resolute, 
and who is indifferent to success or failure is a worker in the mode of goodness. But that worker who is attached to the fruits of his labor and who passionately wants to enjoy them, who is greedy, envious, and impure, and moved by happiness and distress, is a worker in the mode of passion. And that worker who is always engaged in work against the injunctions of the scripture, who is materialistic, obstinate, cheating, and expert in insulting others, who is lazy, always morose, and procrastinating, is a worker in the mode of ignorance. Now, O winner of wealth, please listen as I tell you in detail of the three kinds of understanding and determination according to the three modes of nature. O son of Pritha, that understanding by which one knows what ought to be done and what ought not to be done, what is to be feared and what is not to be feared, what is binding and what is liberating, that understanding is established in the mode of goodness. And that understanding which cannot distinguish between religious way of life and the irreligious, between action that should be done and action that should not be done, that imperfect understanding, O son of Pritha, is in the mode of passion. That understanding which considers irreligion to be religion and religion to be irreligion, under the spell of illusion and darkness, and strives always in the wrong direction, O Partha, is in the mode of ignorance. O son of Pritha, that determination which is unbreakable, which is sustained with steadfastness by yoga practice, and thus controls the mind, life, and the acts of the senses, is in the mode of goodness. And that determination by which one holds fast to fruit of result in religion, economic development, and sense gratification, is of the nature of passion, O Arjuna. And that determination which cannot go beyond dreaming, fearfulness, lamentation, moroseness, and illusion, such unintelligent determination is in the mode of darkness. O best of the Bhartas, now please hear from me about the three kinds of happiness which the conditioned soul enjoys, and by which he sometimes comes to the end of all distress. That which in the beginning may be just like poison, but at the end is just like nectar, and which awakens one to self-realization, is said to be happiness in the mode of goodness. That happiness which is derived from contact of the senses with their objects, and which appears like nectar at first, but poison at the end, is said to be of the nature of passion. And that happiness which is blind to self-realization, which is delusion from beginning to end, and which rises from sleep, laziness, and illusion, is said to be of the nature of ignorance.